I've noticed a pattern, at least in recent weeks, and my memory doesn't stretch far enough back to recall whether or not it was happening earlier in the year. But last week, coming out of a couple of primetime games, the officiating theme was uncalled holding. This week, coming out of a couple of primetime games, there's a roughing the passer call that I believe wasn't roughing the passer. We saw Jalen Phillips on Sunday night, and eventually the league, to my surprise, admitted that it was a bad call. We saw it last night, and this was the damn break moment. This was 28-3 with 12 and a half minutes left. This game was over, so I don't want to complain too loudly because we were going to have extended garbage time last night if this touchdown (laughs) counts, Yeah, but it should have. It should have, and for all due respect to Kirk Herbstreet, who defended this call, Kirk, I don't know what the hell you saw, and I was waiting for Terry McCauley to chime in. I wanted to at least hear whether or not he thought this was the right call because this looks just like what Jalen Phillips did that the league eventually admitted was a bad call when they flagged him for it. When I saw this, Mike, the one thing I thought was, okay, maybe they got him for a body weight sack or a body weight hit, but you watch it, you watch it, And it really isn't body weight. He almost hits him and then goes crossways on him. You see that? You couldn't really call that a body weight sack because it's it's like it's like a body weight over his midsection to some degree. It it, it was just an odd look. I don't know. Officials right now, the referee right now, is in my opinion. He is so rattled. He's so afraid of getting that call on Tuesday morning at 9.30 when all the grades come in. And I don't know if it's different on a Thursday night, but really on Tuesday morning is when the grades come into the officials. And they're all just nervous about, about missing a call that is gonna be called by a supervisor, by a cross checker, is gonna be called uh, you know, is going to be is going to be flagged as a play that you should have gotten, and and you should have called. And so that to me is what is happening in the NFL. These refs, they all want to work deep into the playoffs. That's what they want to do, and they know that if they miss hits on the quarterback, that's the easiest road to being home for the winner on January sixteenth. We were showing the sack that wasn't called roughing the passer. And I'm trying to be as objective here as possible. I think that if you showed me both plays and asked me which one would be called roughing the passer, I would lean toward the second one, not the first one. If I knew that one of the two was, because the second one had more of an element of driving him into the ground. And maybe, maybe there was a hesitation to throw it a second time on Nick Bosa after getting him the first time and recognizing maybe it wasn't. But, Peter, here's the fundamental problem with the current roughing the passer rule. And this needs to be amplified. This needs to be discussed on every talk show, every TV show, every podcast, every blog, every media outlet that covers the NFL. And this is why I'm surprised there was an admission on Wednesday at the league meetings that the call on Sunday night was not the correct call. The rule is written to mandate the official, to resolve doubt, any doubt, when in doubt, that phrase is in the rule book, when in doubt, call the penalty when it comes to roughing the passer. What other rule has that, when in doubt, throw the flag? And until that's taken out, that is going to lead to situations like this where there's any doubt, there's any shadow of doubt, flicker of doubt, reasonable doubt, 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 out comes the flag. And they can make it subject to replay review to fix it if the doubt crept in and caused the flag to be thrown. But that's the biggest problem with it. And and I think that's why it's incumbent on us, Peter, to make sure fans understand that's why these flags are coming out because that's why it came out. It shouldn't have been. It was a it was a doubt that shouldn't have existed, but that's what doubt is. <laughs> doubt is anything that causes you to be slightly unclear about what you think you saw, and you're making those decisions in real time, Peter. And like you said, you know they want to keep the quarterbacks healthy. Troy Vincent explained it this way back in October on ESPN after the Grady Jackson foul that wasn't and others, and it was a big deal for a little while. And he said, hey, we got – 
we got top 91 shows on TV this year or football games and people tune in to watch quarterbacks and points and we want to keep our quarterbacks healthy. So that's why they're doing this. That There's got to be a better way and they're starting to figure it out, I think. But last night, and hey, again, I don't want to complain too loudly because it made for a more exciting game. But boy, if the Seahawks had won that game and I'm a 49ers fan, I'm pissed because it should have been 28 to six with 12 and a half minutes left in the third quarter. <clears throat> I, I, there's nothing to add to that. It's it's all exactly the way it should be. And, and look, I guess I would I would just sort of I, I'd echo that, and I would just add one thing. The thing that I learned in uh, this was now oh, nine years ago. I did a week a story on a week in the life of of the officials with Gene Steratore's crew, and I went around the country and I saw. Uh, Dino Paganelli, the back judge, who's a social studies teacher in, in outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And, and, you know, so I went to see all these guys and we, <clears throat> many of the discussions were about rules and about studying the rules. And Gene Steratore himself, I saw the Paul cast o- come over his face at 930 on Tuesday morning. I was at his house with him. And he looked at, he opened up the email with his grades from the previous game, Houston against Arizona. And he got downgraded two plays that day or that that weekend. And the first words out of his mouth, Mike, there goes the Super Bowl. Hmm. And so I don't want to harp on that, but that's the reality of what is at stake for these officials. They all want to work the Super Bowl. They're all driven to be the best. Cleet Blakeman wants to be the best. Sean Hockley wants to be the best. And so that is what is weighing on them as they see tremendously athletic and and brutish, you know, pass rushers, you know, like Nick Bosa. Uh, like Joey Bosa's brother, you know, just down the coast. But they look at this and they have to make calls like this in in just split second, in in just in real time. I do not envy them this task. I just don't. They're on the field. They see these things happening. I'm not killing the officials for 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 missing these calls. I think it's natural with all the pressure on them to miss these calls because they all want to work the Super Bowl and they all want to go deep into the playoffs. I totally get it. But Mike, it puts a lot of pressure on them that in my opinion, leads to some wrong calls because they're worried about getting downgraded. And among other things too, they're trying to stay alive among the gladiators with no helmets, no padding, and they're trying to see what's happening with the naked eye as it's flashing by them. And that's why I think, and I doubt that I'm alone here because I know I've talked to some people who I believe have real influence. I just think it takes time to make it happen. Almost a reimagining of the entire officiating function. Sean Payton likes to say that we're still using two metal rods and 10 yards of chain to determine whether or not somebody got a first down. (laughs) Like there has to be a better way that reflects the advances that have been made in society over the last hundred plus years that would make it easier to more accurately officiate what happens in an NFL game. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC sports.